I'll be ministering on that, and uh, it'll be really good too. It's talking about some of the the, the gifts of power and the gifts of uh, vocal gifts and the mind gifts. So uh, that'll be tonight. So let's look and see what God says about souls in heaven or in hell. You know, you and I have a soul, a spirit man that dwells in this house in the body. And you and I, when we die, we'll be lifted up, but we'll still be conscious. Did you know that? We'll still be conscious of what's going on because your soul and spirit will never die. And uh, you make the decision here upon this earth where you'll be a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ or whether you will follow the world and the evils of the world out there. And uh, that will determine at the time of death uh, where uh, your spirit and soul man will go, okay? So let's just look a little bit and see what God says about it. A man's soul is emotions and passions, and it, uh, it drives us. It gives us appetite and feeling. That's our soul. The spirit man is the intellect and the will and the conscience. And you know God won't go against your will. Do you know that? If you will to go back out in the world and do things uh, uh, that's evil, God will not go against your will. But if you will to serve his son Jesus and come with him and be a believer and determination uh, uh, with him, praise God, uh, uh, he'll be right there with you. Amen. So uh, that's some of the stuff we're going to look at this morning. I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians 5.23, and I don't have my clicker this morning, and um, y'all just had to bear with me. <laughs> and if you got your Bible and you want to follow this, please do, because uh, it's good. God's always good. I talked to some a man last night, called me at 10 o'clock last night. He'd been in the prison for a few years, and they let him out, and he backslid, and he went back out in the world. He had, uh, I'm just going to tell you, I ain't going to tell you his name, but he had a wife. He got a wife and kids and and was having a, 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 a beautiful uh, life after he'd come out of prison, and he was one of the prisons we'd go out for years over there, and he called me. He said he kept wishing, i got to find that card i got to find that card of Liberty Ministries. And uh, his mama brought him some stuff. He's in a halfway house, and he found the card of Liberty Ministries, and he called me. And uh, we're going to try to get him to church over here, but he lost everything, but he's back in with the Lord now. And uh, But that's what the devil can do to you uh, when you decide to fall off the wagon or what might happen whatsoever. So you got to be... Uh, alert uh, of things going on uh, in your life amen so we're praying that god's going to uh, lift this man up my prayer is god's going to lift him up and put him back up there and get him back with his family and uh, he'll get him back a normal life in jesus christ amen said he's reading the word and and trying to get back in with the lord so y'all pray for him uh, i pray god's going to just touch him in a mighty way let's look in the uh, 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 first thessalonians 5 23 the word of god and see what the Lord has for us on that. It says right here, uh, verse 23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body. You'll see that? Three. Soul, spirit, and this old body is just the housing. Think about it. And it wears out and goes away unless we go into rapture. Amen. And when we get with the Lord, eventually we're going to have us Christians are going to have an immortal body that will never die and, and know the sin and the curses on, on this earth, sickness or anything. Amen. And, of course, the ones that had the in hell is going to have an immortal body, too. It'll never die. Well, the worm never dies. You can see that in Isaiah 66 and, and see some more about that. But let's, let's, let's look right here again. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. We see it in his holy word. We see it by the signs of prophecies being fulfilled right around us today, y'all. So my prayer is for us and everybody in here is to be worthy to go in the rapture. Amen. But if you know if the Lord decided to take me before that and I did go by the grave or whatever, I want to be ready and know that I know that I'm going to meet my maker uh, in heaven. Amen. Because uh, my soul and spirit, man, will immediately uh, go with be, to be with the Lord if I went uh, by the grave. 
Amen? Think about that immediately. That's comforting for a Christian. But I'm here to tell you right now, for a sinner that's living in the world out there and doing those sinful things that's dragging them down, and they die, something happens, they immediately uh, go to a place called hell and to be held there to the second resurrection. Now let's go. And uh, look, I, I want to read that again. I like that. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you right now, the Lord is coming back. Amen. It's all in God's Word. You can see it. And by the way, He's already come one time. You know, here back about 40, 50 years ago, there was very few Hebrew Christians. Did y'all know that? Because they don't believe that Jesus has come. But I'm here to tell you right now, they took a survey the other day I was reading uh, this morning or yesterday, that there's almost a million Hebrew Christians coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. They are Chinese coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. They are Muslims coming to the Lord Jesus Christ in groves. God's fixing to come back. Amen. And he's pouring his spirit out for those uh, that are hungry and that wants it. Amen. Let's look right here in the, in the gospel of Genesis. I love Genesis. And uh, look and see what... Uh, God's Word said in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, you're special. We're special. Did you know that? In Genesis 1, uh, 26 and 27, the inner man is created. He's made in God's image. Y'all hear that? And uh, the body is formed of dust, uh, and we're going to see that in just a minute. And God's shape, figure, bodily form, man was made in the likeness of God, soul, spirit, and body. Now let's look right here and see what the word says. And God said, let us make man in our image. Now God said, let us. What's this us stuff? That's the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Think about that, y'all. And uh, said, after our likeness, let us make man after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish in the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. You know, God's given us that dominion. Did you know mankind's getting, uh, I think they're getting pretty smart. They, they send in commercial flights now to outer space. Did you know that? It ain't government thing, commercial price and stuff like that. And they got one going up there now. They're calling it the dragon. Imagine that. It's going to be in outer space, the upper universe up there. And uh, so a lot of stuff is coming uh, right uh, the way the Lord and some of the prophets said it was going to happen, y'all. Let's look right here and, and look. And it says right here, Of the seas and the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, he didn't uh, create a, something they call... Uh, gender thing that's a that's a man-made godless name this wrong god created a man and he created a woman now let's go a little bit further right here and look in god's word in genesis 2 7 and see what it says in his holy word his holy word says in seven it says and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils and breathed of life and the man became a living soul. Think about it. God loves us so much. Amen. He made us in his image. You're created in God's image. Amen. And when you see a brother or sister out there, uh, something going on or whatever, they're created in God's image. And we need to protect God's image, y'all. And we need to protect what God has done for us. Judgment is coming for America and peoples of the world. It's got to come for the abortions that uh, America has done, 63 million babies innocently. I'm telling you, it's coming, y'all. But I tell you this, we got to rejoice because we're the, the children of God. And when these things start really happening, the great tribulation, some of that, we out of here, y'all. I'm telling you, I just feel like we at the edge of, of this happening. Now let's go a little bit further right here and look. And we see the body was formed of dust. God's shape, figure, body, form, man was made in the likeness of God, soul, spirit, and body. Amen. Now I'm going to get into something. Woody, you better listen to me, boy. Where are you at? Raise your hand. 
I, I see Woody back there. He'll like this one. Let's go to Psalms 139. If you got your Bible and you want to follow with me. The book of Psalms, I'll tell you, this is good right here. I had to uh, get some of this in there. And, you know, we serve an awesome God, y'all. And I tell you right now, you think, well, we just formed out of the earth and God did this and God did this. You don't know what kind of super wonderful miracle that you and I are formed of God. It's mind boggling that we serve an awesome God that can do some of these awesome things to you and I. Amen. So if you got your Bible, I want you to turn to Psalms 139, verse 14. And I want you all to listen to this. The Bible says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Did you hear that? You are wonderfully made. Now, wait a minute. Marvelous are thy works. Oh, his works is marvelous. We're going to go over just a little bit here and show you some of this stuff. And uh, uh, that thy soul knoweth right well. Now, let me give you a little bit of something going on, how wonderful you are made. Let's look at a little bit of the chemicals that's in man. Some of the chemicals that's in the body is iron, sugar, salt, carbon, iodine, lime, calcium, uh, others, there's other stuff in there too, but this is some of the basic, basic one. I probably got too much of certain ones in me. <laughs> I like those sweets, we are. But I'm telling you, did y'all hear that? Your body is formed. In, now let's go a little bit further right here and look. Lime, calcium, and other ones. Did you know you have 263 bones in your body? Are you wonderfully made or not? Now we, this is awesome. I want y'all to listen. 263 bones in your body. Did you know you have, Donnie, 600 muscles in your body? And when you fall down, you might hurt one and make it a little achy, but it's going to get better in Jesus' name. Think about it, y'all. You've got 600 muscles in your body. Think about it. And I know some of you guys pump iron, and I know you get allergic to it, and it swells you up. The kale, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's look right here. 600 muscles. You hearing this, Woody? Listen to this. You got, we got 970 miles of blood vessels. 970 miles. Now, are you created by some awesome God or what, y'all? This is, we're wonderfully created. That's what the Word of God said, didn't it? 970 miles of blood vessels. Did you know you have 400 cups on your tongue to taste them mellow cups and Snickers? <laughs> and them cherry pies. Think about it, y'all. This is awesome, though, isn't it? You are wonderfully made and created in the image of God Almighty. Man, this is supernatural stuff we're talking about here. Only a, a creator of God could do something like this. 400 cups on the tongue for taste. Did you know you got 20,000 hairs in your ear that tunes in to sound? 20,000. And uh, I got a few of mine messed up, I think, because when I tune sometimes, it's a little here and there, you know. But I tune to the great tuner, God Almighty. 20,000 hairs God put in your ear so you could hear sound. Is that amazing? Are you wonderfully made? Are you wonderfully made by our creator? Hallelujah. Let's look at a couple of more right here. Look here. You, your jaw has 40 pounds of jaw pressure. So you can chomp into that chicken or steak with no problem. God fixed it, didn't he? Think about it, y'all. Are you wonderfully made this morning in the image of God Almighty? Yes, you are. Let's go a little bit further. Did you know? that uh, your lungs inhales 2,400 gallons of air daily. Man, that's a lot. I always said if you breathe and you blessed. Amen? Think about it. 2,400 gallons of air daily. And did you know that your brain instantly knows sound, taste, sight, touch, smell? And did you know that the heart beats 4,200 times an hour? Is that heart ticking or what? 
You know, I, I, I'll, I'll text my boy sometime or my daughter or something. I'll say, I ain't heard from them in a while. You know, they got a phone too. And I'll say a little note. I'll say, are you still kicking? That's a good sign. Amen. Think about it, y'all. 4,200 times an hour, your heart pumps. Now, you think that's wonderful, don't you? I want you to listen to what your heart is doing. Listen, your heart pumps 12 tons of blood daily. Man, there ain't no equipment out there to do something like that. Only God can create a man that does such a thing. You see how, man, the great watchmaker is our God Almighty. Man, you see how wonderfully made we are? Do y'all see that? Listen to it. 12 tons of blood daily. Now listen, listen. I'll keep it straight here. 600 million air cells in the lungs to inhale. 600 million. So you take it for granted when you do this. Think about it. You take it for granted when you do this and feel that old ticker ticking. Tons of blood for you. It don't wear out to God wants it to wear out and I'm here to tell you this it would never wear out if sin hadn't come into this earth and we were under the curse his intentions were for us to live for eternity amen now let's listen to another one right here 600 million air cells to the lungs that inhale there is 20 million mouths that suck food as it goes into our intestines you got that think about it 600. Oh, you writing it down? You want me to hear it again? There's 20 million mouths in your te intestines that suck food as it goes down. And what happens when that food goes down? It nourishes your body, doesn't it? Does it? Is, do we serve an awesome God? Are we wonderfully made? D does that scripture come alive to you, how wonderfully made that you are to be created in the image of God Almighty? That's awesome, ain't it? It, it, it? We take it for granted sometimes, don't we? Think about it. Let's look right here and see what God says. In 1 uh, uh, Corinthians 6.20, it talks about flesh and spirit that glorifies God. God wants us to do that. If you got your Bible, let's go to... 1 Corinthians, and see what God says. Amen. I get excited about, about this. Look here. 1 Corinthians 6, 20. Word of God says. What For ye are bought with a price. Oh, man. You are bought with an ultimate price. Ultimate price. It says, for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, uh, which are God's. You're God's anyway. Do you know that? By the way, this earth down here is God's. He created it. He made it, didn't he? Glorify God. Did we glorify God this morning and praise and worship him and, and prayer the way he has asked us to do? Amen. And he has touched his people. Amen. Think about this, y'all. Think about this. Let's go to. Uh, Second Corinthians, that's right on up for there. You need to mark this one probably because it'll tell you something you want to hear it and give yourself comfort every now and then uh, about that. I know it's in here. It's in my Bible. I've read it many times. I just got to figure out where it's at. Here we go. Second Corinthians 5, 8 and 10. We want to see what the Word of God said. It's good too, I'll tell you. 8, it says, we're confident, I say, are you confident this morning? We are confident to say and willing rather to be absent from this body to be present with the Lord. Y'all hear that? You need to underline that. Listen to this. We need to comfort each other with this. Comfort each other uh, when things is going on. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You a Christian, you can say that. The people of the world cannot say that. Think about it. I like comfort, don't you? Think about it. I'm going to read a scripture here in just a minute about this dude in hell. And uh, he said he was tormented in that place. 
and old Lazarus the beggar, which was comforted in Abraham's bosom. Y'all know what I'm talking about here? So we do have a conscience, and we do have that spirit, and it stays alive for eternity. Think about that. This old body wears out sometimes, though, don't it? You know, you've been, face it, guys, you've been treating it rough sometimes, haven't you? Ladies, sometimes we abuse it. We're the temple of God, though. Think about it. Amen? Let's look right here <clears throat> in verse 8. We're confident, I say, willing to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that we, whether be present or absent, we may be accepted of him. And that's why we labor for the Lord. We want to be accepted with him, whether present or absent. Amen. Now, think about this, that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that which has been done, whether it be good or or bad y'all hear that so we cry out to god god forgive me i sinned i've done things wrong god put it on and he puts it on the blood for you and i amen but the people that living in the world out there that uh, I, I had to talk with a man just recently and he said well i told him i said now if you go back out in sin you back out in sin and uh, he, he said god has never left me i said no but you left him y'all see the difference God hadn't left him, but God, he left God. And when by his will chose to go back out of the world, he is accountable for death again. You see what I'm saying? Other words, uh, the backslidden people out there, if they believe in this lie that once saved, always saved, going to carry them to hell. That's not so. You read and study God's word. You read and study God's word and see what it says about that. I can tell you two or three. I like to get on that sometimes too. Oh, Lucifer, man, he was in heaven, had him made, didn't he? But he turned on God, and what did God do? Threw him out, didn't he? Amen? So he's got judgment and consequences coming for him. And we see Saul. Saul was anointed of God, and the Bible said he was anointed. And the Bible said God took the anointing. What does that tell you? I can go on some more, Sapphire and all of them and uh Damus and some of them, and uh, and uh, we could go uh, into some more here, but I'm here to tell you, be of good confidence. You're a child of the king, and you are God's. And if you're doing with an open heart trying to follow God, you see what happened when you became a Christian? You put your faith in action, okay? It ain't just faith sitting on the pew back there, I'm saved. When you get saved, you read God's word, you come to God's house, you start doing uh, works to glorify God. See, And you, uh, you know, one of the works you do when you get saved after you're a, uh, a sinner and you get saved, you turn around 180 degrees and you start trying to follow God, don't you? That's your desire. And your desire is not to intentionally sin, okay? You, and so, so we do mess up sometime, don't we? But when you do, you ask God to forgive you, and you get back in that relationship with God where you need to be. Amen? This is good. Word's good, ain't it? Let's look right here in uh, Luke. Yeah, we'll go ahead and turn to Luke, but I'll tell you a story about it a little bit. But um, uh, this is the first uh, uh, message I ever preached. I preached this in the prison, and I had so much fire on me. I, I was amazed. I was shocked myself. And the, the, the man and them was with me was shocked, man. <laughs> anyway, listen to this. <clears throat> and God don't, uh, you know, we don't tickle no ears at Liberty Ministries. We tell it from the front to the back, okay? And uh, let's look in Luke uh, 19. It's talking about, uh, this is a, was actually an actual experience. And I'm, I won't go through it a lot, but it looked right here, it said, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and linen and fared scrumptiously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and uh, desiring to be fed with the crumbs from, from the table, the man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried, uh, uh, carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, the rich man. This is God's word. This is actual experience here. This is Jesus speaking here. Listen to this. It says, in hell, he lifted up his eyes so he could see, couldn't he? He lifted up his eyes, and he was in torment. So if he was in torment, he could feel, couldn't he? Okay, look right here. 
And he seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried. So that spirit and soul man had a conscience and he knew what was going on, didn't he? Y'all see it? This is Jesus speaking. This is actual little experience here. Look here. And the Lazarus that he may, he asked, uh, uh, let Lazarus dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. He said, because I'm tormented in this place. Do y'all see that? And look right here. And, and the word said, and Abraham said, son, remember thou in thy life receiveth thy good things, likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he, now is he comforted and thou art tormented. That's the main focus of this message right here in this Luke scripture that Jesus is talking about. There's two things here, comforted and tormented. Which one you like best? You see it? Now this this rich man died, and he went to hell, and in hell he was tormented. And Lazarus was a man uh, that loved the Lord, and he went into the bosom of Abraham. They went in paradise until Jesus went and liberated him and took him into heaven. He was comforted. Which word do you like best? Amen. First time I preached this in the prison down there, there's 25 cells on the bottom, cell block 109, and 25 on top. And after I got through preaching that message, first time I've ever preached, uh, really bona fide and boy said I want you to preach in that prison me and Jeanette going in this cell block okay and uh, so went in there and the anointing of God fell on me and the power of God hit you should have seen they two people in per cell down 25 cells and 25 cells you should have seen after they it was hard wasn't it torment or comforted you want to be tormented or you want to be comforted you should have seen the hands that stuck outside them bars and said, I want Jesus. Hmm. That's the God we serve. It's his word. His word, Holy Ghost, convicts us to where we should be with the Lord. Amen. Think about that. I'm going to go on from there. I'm going to go <clears throat> to Revelations 22, 17. The Revelations revealing 22:17. Oh yeah. By the way, we we are around 22 in the last part of this book of the Bible, y'all. Think about it. 22:17, the Word of God, and it talks about a man has a will, a free moral agent, his responsible being, and we will be accountable for that one day. Look right here, what it says in in verse 17 of chapter 22. And the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that heareth come, come and let him that is a thirst come and whatsoever and whosoever will. Y'all see that? It's your choice when Jesus said, and uh, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's your will to choose him. Amen. And praise God, we chose him. Look at the joy that God has put on his people in here this morning by prayer and answering prayer and touching touching people that's hurting and all of a sudden they ain't, they ain't hurting now. Amen. We're going to need touching down here. We're not going to need it when we get to the Lord because we're going to have glorified bodies, y'all. Look right here. <clears throat> Whosoever will, your choice. Whosoever will, let him take the water of life <clears throat> freely. How I many remember the film we watched the other night in The Bride? The bride could accept that cup or she could give it back. That was the Galilean wedding that we we're talking about, which uh, uh, Jesus uh, told his disciples uh, that he's coming again. He is the groom coming after his church. And so you and I, John 3, 16, we can accept that cup or reject that cup because we have a will. And God will not go against our will. He loves us. Amen? He loves us so much. And he gives us a free will to do uh, what we want there. Now, John, C John 3, 16, your free will to believe you have that. Now let's go to 2 Peter 1, 21. And I'll tell you what it talks about. 2 Peter 1, 21 says, Not by the will of man, but holy men of God. I'll tell you right now, when the Bible was written uh, it was not by the will of man. Uh, it was by the will of the Holy Ghost that came upon them. Amen. We'll read that one uh, real quick while we're here. And uh, here it is right here. First, uh, Second Peter. Second Peter 1, 21. The word says, 
For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You see that? I'm, I'm here to tell you God loves us so much, doesn't he? Amen. He loves us so much. And he's done a great work here. And I want to y'all remember this message when you go out of here that you are wonderfully made in the image of God Almighty. Hmm. Think about it, y'all. Think about it. I'm going to ask every head will be bowed, please. If there anybody in here that wants to rededicate their life or you're in a backslidden condition, you want to get it right, just raise your hand. We'll pray for you. I thought we was talking to the church this morning. Amen. Praise God. And I'll, I'll ask you another question. I'm going to pray here in just a minute. And uh, the folks on the Internet, we pray that you come back and be with us tonight too. But I'm going to pray every head bowed. And take authority here. Father, in Jesus' name, I rebuke Satan or any unclean or foul spirit coming at this uh, blessing that you gave your people this morning, trying to uh, come against anything that was accomplished here this morning. In the holy name of Jesus, we ask God that you uh, touch your people as they leave here and go about their way today. I pray you'll bless them when they have uh, their lunch and remember that they're wonderfully made in your holy image. And I pray you'll touch everybody here and I bind the devil from stealing the works that was done on your people here today, God. And Lord, I speak blessings on everybody from God Almighty, your son Jesus. Everybody said amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Come back tonight. Like I said, if you want to know about the nine gifts of the Spirit, I'm going to get...